As SSD prices continue to plummet, choosing the right SSD can be confusing. Today I will share some important tips on how to maximize your value when shopping for a new SSD. I spent the last month shopping for a 2TB SSD to use as a dedicated video editing drive. I decided to go with an Intel 670p after I found it on sale for $73. Since the price gap between entry level and high end drives has been shrinking, choosing the right SSD is not that simple. When trying to decide what to buy, you must first determine what you are going to be using it for. Here are some things to consider before making an SSD purchase. The main difference between Gen 3 and Gen 4 drives is speed. Gen 3 has a limit of around 3500 megabytes per second, while Gen 4 can hit up to 7500 megabytes per second. In my case, I am using a B450 motherboard, which only has two Gen 3 NVMe SSD slots. My first slot has a 1TB Samsung 970 EVO. The second slot is limited by shared PCIe lanes. It will only run at Gen 3x2, which is limited even further to 1970 megabytes per second. When using this slot, my motherboard will disable two SATA lanes. This is very important to note, and you should look at your motherboard specifications to find out if you have similar limitations. This can usually be found on the box, website, and in the manual. Luckily for me, I only have three SATA drives in use out of six slots, so two spots being disabled isn't an issue. For me, picking a 2TB drive was a no-brainer. I need as much space as possible, since this will be filling my last open slot. And the price difference between 1TB and 2TB is minimal. I highly recommend going with 2TB since modern games can take up over 100GB each and 1TB can fill up really fast. One important thing to look for when shopping for SSDs is what type of cache it uses. Drives with DRAM have a dedicated memory chip on board that is used for temporarily storing data, similar to RAM on your PC or GPU. In the last few years, an alternate technology has emerged called HMB or Host Memory Buffer. Instead of using a dedicated chip, this feature allows the SSD to use a small portion of your PC RAM as its cache. This can allow for cheaper manufacturing and in some cases even better performance and lower latency. DRAM is considered to be better for boot drives that will run Windows and other software at the same time. Another instance where DRAM matters significantly is when using external enclosures. It is common nowadays to use a cheap enclosure for an NVMe SSD to convert it into an external drive. This can allow users to benefit from transfer speeds near the 3000 megabyte per second limit of the Thunderbolt port. Unfortunately, HMB technology is only supported by Windows and Linux and does not work properly through an external enclosure. So if you plan to use a drive externally, make sure it has DRAM. The Intel 670p 2TB has a terabytes written rating of 740. This is high enough to leave me worry free with the amount of stress I will put on the drive. Most people will never come close to hitting these ratings and they are more of a guideline for warranty purposes as most drives will outlive the rated numbers. Drives may fail over time, but they rarely die from too much wear. Speaking of warranty, this Intel drive offers a five year limited warranty, but it won't be honored through Intel. That's because SK Hynix bought Intel's SSD division and NAND facility in December of 2021, and have transformed it into Solidime. While SK Hynix is based out of Korea, the newly branded Solidime is based in the US. In February, Solidime named the city of Rancho Cordova in Greater Sacramento the company's new global headquarters. This is great for warranty purposes because it will make dealing with customer service much easier than contacting someone based out of the country. 
SK Hynix is the world's top-tier semiconductor supplier offering DRAM, NAND flash, and CMOS image sensors. The SK Hynix P31 Gold and P41 Platinum have been widely regarded as the best SSDs on the market, boasting amazing power efficiency as well. At just $73, the Intel 670P was a bargain too good to pass up. Some other drives I considered were the P31 at $107, the Solidime P44, which is a rebranded SK Hynix P41 Platinum at $130, and the crucial P5 Plus at $122. Some other notable deals are the Geek Squad refurbished Samsung drives at Best Buy. The 970 EVO Plus 2TB is only $95, and the 980 Pro 2TB is $118. These drives are usually just returns that are tested and resold. Many users on Reddit report these drives as basically brand new, and returns are easy enough if they have too many hours on them. But knowing my speeds would be limited to under 200 megabytes per second, I decided to go with the better value and get the Intel drive. But shortly after buying the 670p, the Solidime P41 Plus dropped to $75. This is a revised version of the Intel 670p that runs at Gen 4 speeds and has updated software. It also uses HMB instead of DRAM. I would have bought this drive over the 670p, but it was $80 at the time, and I decided I'd rather save $7. I know, $7. Before you buy an M.2 NVMe SSD, make sure you can locate the microscopic screws that come with your motherboard. They do not come with the drive, so you may have to order one if you can't locate them. They are very easy to lose, and you don't want to end up like me, rummaging through my motherboard box, unable to remember where I stashed them years ago. Installation was easy for me, as my second slot is located low enough that I did not have to remove the GPU to access it. Simply slide it in the slot and put the tiny screw to hold it down. After installing any NVMe drive, make sure to install the appropriate software. In my case, this will be the Solidime storage tool, but other brands like Samsung offer their own tools as well. These programs will monitor your drive for health and keep the firmware updated. This is very important since last year, Samsung had a major firmware issue that was causing drives to fail. Luckily, the software would install the latest update preventing many people from unnecessary failures. With the issue resolved, Samsung drives continue to be the standard for high-end SSDs. In brief testing with this drive, it appeared to perform as expected. You can see the results here from Crystal Disk Mark. I also tried copying a folder with over 60 gigabytes of various files and speeds stayed consistent. I hope my recent shopping experience can help you pick your next SSD. I must warn you though that data hoarding is very addictive and you might just end up like me with way too many drives. Thank you for watching.